uh, is uh, switched back and forth between the slides. So, uh, yeah. I have. I will have video on the slides as well. Oh, yeah, great. Thanks. Of the things that are small. Yeah, great. All right. How's that? Test one, two. Okay, uh, we are ready for our next uh, talk, which is about uh, a very interesting project called uh, GoBot, which uh, combines Go with uh, the world of uh, IoT. I've already seen on the internet, haven't tried it myself, some very interesting projects like a Go-powered uh, barbecue. Uh, and it's, it's such a project, you can all probably imagine something that you can do with this. Ron Evans, the floor is yours. Thank you. So whenever I go home and see my family the question that always comes up at these important meals is, are the robots going to take our jobs? And so I try to explain to them the real state of robotics. This is a video from last year's DARPA challenge. And uh, try to explain to them that general purpose robotics has a long way to go, and they're you know, specialized things, may be able to do very specific purpose applications, but just in general, there's nothing to be afraid of. And this is all they hear the whole time I'm talking. That's, that's all they hear. So Roy Amara, the former head of the Institute for the Future at Stanford University, said that we have the tendency to overestimate the effect of a technology in the short term and underestimate the effect over the long term. Good morning. Buenos dias, bon dia, guten tag, bonjour. Uh, so I'm Ron Evans, known as Dead Program on the internet, all the important places, GitHub, Twitter, etc. I'm the ringleader of the hybrid group. We're a software consultancy based in Los Angeles and in Spain. Uh, some of our clients include Intel. Thank you very much for sponsoring my trip, by the way. Uh, Sphero, we did a lot of work on this little robot uh, with two letters and a number used in this movie about wars and the stars. That's all I'm allowed to say. And uh, we've done a lot of open source projects, including this little project called GoBot. So why you should use Golang for programming hardware? Well, there's three main reasons. There's lots more, but you know, rule of threes. So the first one is concurrency. It's really, really easy to write concurrent code in Golang, and when you're dealing with different hardware devices that can do whatever they're going to do whenever they end up doing it, concurrency is really, really important. Another is portability. When you're trying to develop software that needs to be deployed to different kinds of devices, maybe entirely different platforms, different flavors of operating system, the cross-compilation and the static linking of Go is really the best thing out there. And then performance. So uh, Go is well known for being extremely performant. The new Go 1.8, which is just about to come out in about two weeks, they re, uh, as, who here actually uses Go? Sweet. The rest of you just, um, you should be doing it right now. Um, so Go 1.8 adds to the garbage collector inside of Go the slowest possible stop the world garbage collection is 100 microseconds. Not milliseconds, microseconds. So why do you program in C++ to do real app time applications anymore? Well, the answer is you shouldn't. Uh, so we've all heard about the C10K, having concurrent 10,000 connections. Well, we're moving towards what I like to call 10M IoT, which is 10 million IoT devices simultaneously pumping data. And these are not like over the world. This is the ones that are reporting to your company that you have to monitor. So GoBot is a framework. I've obviously us, we've come out of the closet. We are a framework. I know some people think frameworks are bad, and some people think bad frameworks are bad, and good ones are good. So uh, we like to think of it as a software factory for doing hardware-oriented development, or full-stack robotics. But that's kind of long, if you want to talk about that more later. So we have three ways that you can use GoBot now. One of them is what we call classic GoBot, and it's when you're having just a single device that you want to control. Here's just a quick little diagram. The main concept is the robot. Robots have both adapters and drivers. Adapters actually talk to the hardware, and then the adapters provide the interfaces that drivers can then talk to. So adapters let you talk to things like Arduinos, BeagleBone Blacks, Intel Edison's. 
Drivers let you control things like LEDs, buttons, digital accelerometers. This way you can have the same LED that knows how to blink regardless of what kind of hardware it's connected to. The last thing that's important is where we have events. We have an event channel that is created for each one of the drivers and then the robot can subscribe to those events and that way we can get all of Go's wonderful concurrency. You can also use Master GoBot. Master GoBot adds, if you want to control multiple robots at the same time, you have the master, or so we sometimes call it the MCP. If you're a Tron fan, you thought that was funny. Uh, that's how we expose GoBot's own API, its external facing API. So it consumes APIs and then it produces them. And we have one that's already built in for a REST API. And then Metal GoBot. Metal GoBot is if you want to just call the packages for the adapters and the drivers directly yourself, you can do that now, uh, starting with GoBot 1.0. So if you really want to go hardcore metal, we got you. All right, so let's get right to the demos because uh, time is short. So the Hello World of Things is a blinking LED. So I'm going to start with a, an Arduino 101, which is your basic Arduino. Who here actually has an Arduino? Yeah, exactly. Who here has an Arduino in a drawer that's covered over by a bunch of other electronics? <laughs> All right. So we're just going to do a very simple little uh, blink. So here's the code. Um, so we have our package main. We import the GoBot packages, GoBot itself, the GPIO drivers, which is how we control LEDs and buttons and things, and then the Fermata platform, which is how we're going to communicate with the microcontroller. The microcontroller is not running Go. Can't run Go on microcontrollers yet. But we can run a program on there called Fermata, which allows us to use microcontrollers as peripherals that can then communicate with different low-level hardware devices. I mean, who says that the brain and the body have to be in the same chassis? That's a human problem, right? <laughs> All right, so our main function, we have our adapter. So we call the Fermata package new adapter, and we pass in the port, which is how we're going to communicate with it. Our LED with our new LED driver on pin 13 to use that adapter. And then the work that we're going to do. The work is every one second, LED.toggle. So it's off, turn it on. If it's on, turn it off. And then we construct our robot. We say our new robot named BlinkBot. And it has one connection, which is the adapter, one driver, which is the LED, and then the work that we're going to have it do, and then start it off. We do this so that we can make sure by the time your work gets started that all of your connections have already connected and all of your devices have already started. That way when your work that you're supposed to be performing, because again, we're trying to take the patterns that you're going to need consistently when developing physical applications and then utilize them easily. All right, so let's see if the demo gods favor me today. Let's see. Uh, am I in the right directory? Oh, demo. That's right. This is how you know it's real. All right. So we're running the code and our blinking LED. <laughs> Thank you. Good night. No. All right. So now let's get into some basic I.O. All right, we said hello world, but we need kind of a ping of things. We need to know that both in input and output are working. So we're going to use that same um, device, but we're going to plug a few things onto it here. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to connect to it a Grove shield, which lets me plug things in without actually worrying about where everything's set in the breadboard, because you know, who has time for that when you're giving a talk? So then let's look at the uh, program that we're going to run here. So it's, almost, it's very, very similar. Okay, we're still using the GPIO package, still using the Fermata package. We still initialize the Fermata adapter to talk to the Arduino. But now we have two devices. We have the LED, this time in pin digital 2. And we have a button, which is in pin digital 3. And the work that we're going to do is we're going to say button.on GPIO.button push. And then we have a function, a Go function. So when that gets called, go LED.toggle. So what this is actually doing is a really, really major improvement to GoBot 1.0. This is actually creating an event channel 
subscribing to it off of the button, making sure that the events come through are selected only for the button push, and then calls your Lambda with the data that's been passed into it only when it's appropriate. And then it takes that Go routine and puts it to sleep. So basically, you get all of this concurrency that you're going to need, because this pattern you're going to use over and over and over again, every single type of hardware device you want to connect to. And then same initialization of the robot. The only difference is now we have two devices, the LED and the button. And then, so let's plug in. Let's see, it was the LED and two. And then the button in three. As I recall. All right. So let's see. What did I call it? Button? Hopefully. Yes. All right. So if we go here, when we push the button, the LED lights up. And when we push it again, it turns off. Because remember, we use toggle. Toggle, toggle. Yes, input and output. <laughs> All right, um, what time does this end? 11.10? <laughs> um, I just want to see if I have time for the... Beautiful. All right, so let's show a complete app. So um, we actually do this for a living. We're really, really lucky human beings that we write software for hardware companies for a living. And so, but we often can't talk about it, and I can't talk about it today. However, I have, through the miracles of modern open source technology, simulated the key features of an application that we've been working on for an energy company. It's called Mini Luminado, which in, is Spanish for, you know, little lit up. And it's a solar power monitoring system. So it has sensor stations, it has a base station, and it has a repair system for when the solar production energy systems are not working as expected. So um, here's a little diagram. So for the solar monitoring, we're going to use an Intel Edison. For the base station, we're going to use an Arduino 101. And then for the repair system, oh, we're going to fly a repair drone from Parrot. All right. And then we're going to use MQTT which is a machine-to-machine -machine messaging protocol standard originally created by IBM but currently maintained by the Eclipse Foundation. And so we're going to be using MQTT to handle all of the machine-to-machine -machine communication taking place between these three different running programs. All right, sensor station. So we got the Intel Edison, the sensors, and MQTT. All right, so let's see here. Make sure I'm not running this. Good. All right, so let's unplug this. So here's my Intel Edison. Actually, this is the Edison here. It's just this little tiny board. This is an Arduino compatible breakout board. And this is the battery, because I'm running this off the battery. Right now, it is connected to my gateway. I have here uh, a uh, Intel Nook, which is a little network uh, utility computer. It's running a Wind River Linux, which is a carrier grade Linux. So uh, I know this looks like a bunch of toys, but it's really serious stuff. <laughs> so this is uh, running the MQTT server as well. I'm sorry, what was my closing ending time? 1110? Yes. Okay, beautiful. All right. So let's plug in. Um, well, let's see. What, what are we showing first? Oh, we're going right into it. All right. So I'm going to take my. Um, Shield from before, and I'm going to plug it in here. Wait, if I plug it in the right way. There we go. The other left. All right, that looks good. And so what we need here is we need our sensor, which is a, uh, well, let's look at the code real quick here. So um, we're going to go over this kind of fast. So we have a bunch of packages, go by again. This time we're using the AIO drivers, which is for analog input and output. We're using the I2C or I square C as the serious, you know, gray beards call it, gray hairs, beards and hairs. Um, so that's a, I square C is a communication protocol used for inter inter chip communication right on the board itself. So then we have the Intel Edison platform. That's how we're going to provide the interface to the low-level I.O. And then the MQTT platform. So all of these things together. So let's look at the code. We uh, initialize our Edison adapter. We turn on our light sensor and our screen. Then we have our second adapter, which is the server, which is communicating with um, our MQTT server. And then the work that we're going to do so the first thing is when our light sensor has data, 
we're going to set our variable equal to that data. That way, most of the time, sensors provide data a lot faster than physical things can respond. Servos can't move as quickly as you can read data. So we want to separate those things. Another area where Go's concurrency is quite helpful. So then every 500 milliseconds, we're going to send the data for that, the current light meeting, reading to our MQTT server. We're going to server.publish to this topic. MQTT topics are a little bit like URLs. And then we're going to send the data. And then every 250 milliseconds, we're going to clear the screen, write the data onto the screen, and then based on that data, change the color of the backlit LCD. And then the work that we're going to do is simply, uh, or sorry, the robot itself is simply add the two connections, add the device, and start. All right. So let's see if I have a connection to my Edison. Yes. And let's plug in our sensors. So let's see, the light sensor was in zero, as I recall. And the display is an I square C peripheral, so we plug it in here. All right, so far so good. All right, so here we have our light sensor, and when I cover it over, you see, oh, sorry. Here I have my light sensor, and when I cover it over, you can see the screen is changing. All right, so this is wireless. It's not super well connected, so, uh, but I'm going to pass it around so you guys can check it out. And uh, please don't drop it. We need this for the rest of the demo, too. If you want to see it work, just cover over the uh, uh, photo transistor, photo resistor, excuse me. All right, so while you pass that around, pass, keep, pass it quick. Pass it, man. All right, the base station. All right, for the base station, we're going to use an Arduino 101. We're going to use LEDs, and we're going to use the MQTT server. All right, so it's the second part of our little system. So I'm going to use my um, Arduino 101 again. And this time, I'm going to plug it into the gateway, because it's going to be easier for me with all of these cables to do that. Oh supposedly easier. And so I'm going to use a different shield. This is a shield that I made. Um, it's in order to control the RGB LEDs of this strip. It's a 12 volt device. And since microcontrollers are usually 5 or 3.3 volts, we need some way to control it. So I built this little board that's got three TP120s that you shouldn't use these, by the way, according to the internet. Um. <clears throat> Yes, anyway, as I was saying, so let's plug this in. All right, so far so good. And then I'm going to plug in two more things. The first one is I'm going to plug in the actual um, strip. Hopefully, if I don't bend a pin. All right, so far so good. And then the power. We need power. All right, since we need power to control the um, LEDs. All right, so a little. And so here's the code for the base station. So we're using the Fermata platform again. We're using GPIO again. And we're using MQTT again. This time we're, gonna, we're actually declaring our board and our different adapters and devices separately as pointers because we're going to write some functions later that are going to use those. That way we don't have to put everything into this giant work routine. Right? We can have some better encapsulation, proper architecture of modern software. Yes. So, um, so our main function here, uh, we're going to use the GoBot API just to see it. We're going to literally look at it for one second. The board is connected as it was before. We have the RGB LED driver for this strip. We have our base station, which is going to get data from the light and from the drone. Oh, whoops, that's the third part. And then the work, work that we're going to do, when we get light data, we're going to translate that light data. And then based on it, we're going to display the light level. This is an information radiator. You ever built a Travis build modifier that shows a red light? If you haven't, you should. You put it up in the office, giant red light. Works great. So. Um, when the drone data is sent, depending on the flight status, if it's flying or not, if it's flying, we're going to blink the LEDs. Otherwise, we're going to stop. 
and then we have a couple of those functions. When we display the light level, we look at the light level, and depending on how bright it is, we either display green, the system is working correctly, blue, not so good, or red. Kind of the same color you see on the system, which may make it back to the back by the end of the talk. <laughs> you can't blame them. It's really fun. All right. So um, let's go and run the code, hopefully, on the gateway. I don't see any light. Why no light? There we go. Helps to plug things in. All right. So we're actually seeing the colors. Only the person who's playing with it can see, but the, and the people next to them. So if you cover over the little photoresistor. Ooh. No hands. <laughs> All right. We haven't even gotten to the good part. All right. So we're going to just kind of keep that running. Um, all right, Robo. So we actually have this API built in. I don't have time to show you everything about it, but it's built in React. And you can actually, through the magic of binary compilation, you can actually create all of your static assets and package them all up right into your Go application so that you have a single file that you deploy to production. Did you get that? Oh, man. So um, let's take a look at it. And so this is Robo, and it's running on the gateway. And it shows we have a single device running, or robot, which is our base station. And we see that we have Fermata and the two uh, MQTT connections for our virtual devices. Literally, that's all I have time to show you, but it's in there. You can check it out, robo.io. So now, how do I get rid of this? Oh, wrong one. Oh, wait, no right one. Oh, phew. All right, so we saw that. Cool. All right, the repair system. How are we doing? Oh, plenty of time. The repair system uses our parent mini drone, our DS3 controller. Just, I'm kind of an Xbox gamer, but I like PlayStation controllers for flight. It's weird. <laughs> and then MQTT, which is going to coordinate this all. So I'm going to run this program. So remember, right now we have two programs running, one on the Edison, one on the Gateway. And now I'm going to run the third one on my computer because I don't have time to set up any more gear. All right, and so this is the final phase of the mini Illuminado system. It's the repair system. So when things go wrong out in the field, well, naturally, this is the modern era. You send a repair drone with the replacement part, of course. So to fill in for a more serious drone, since I know some people are kind of scared of the drones because there's very bad drones. So I'm going to use this Parrot mini drone, which is a toy drone. Um, I've got my little. Uh, worker here on the front. <laughs> that's, that's Kelsey Hightower. <laughs> He's helped us make Go fly more than once. All right, so um, this is actually a complete Linux machine. Believe it or not, it's got an ARM processor and it's running a BusyBox distro. And we're going to call, it's got a Bluetooth low energy wireless interface and that's how we're going to control it. We're not running Go on it yet. <laughs> give, me, give me a few more weeks. All right, so let's turn it on. So I'm put it here in the headquarters. Uh, let's see, my cables. Hopefully, this will all work. This is my, this, I don't even use name brand. That's what open source brings us to. If Intel only made controllers. All right, and then let's take a look at the code real fast. So we're using the GoBot BLE adapter, Bluetooth Low Energy adapter, which is still uh, in a relatively new state. Um, the joystick platform, MQTT, and then the mini drone itself. So we've got takeoff and landing commands. So the main work we're going to do here is we're going to, first we're going to load up the joystick. Uh, whoops, scroll past it. We're going to load the joystick configuration. That way we know which kind. We, all, we support PlayStation 3, 4, and Xbox 360. Your pull request awaits the next one. That's just what I have. Um, so then we initialize our drone based on the BLE adapter, okay, which we're passing in the name of the device, and our MQTT server. So we actually have three different simultaneous types of platforms we're communicating with in one program. So then the work we're going to do Let's see, uh, the important parts. When I press triangle, we're going to take off. 
And then we're going to send a message that says we're taking off. OK, so far so good. And then when I press X, we're land. So let's see. Triangle take off X land. That's the only, that's all that matters. Then I got a bunch of commands to you know, handle the joysticks. And then if you recall, physical things can't respond as quickly. You can move the joystick a lot faster than your drone can respond, which will mean it will crash. So we have this go routine, which every 10 milliseconds is going to send commands to the drone. That way we don't, or I don't accidentally crash it into one of you fine people. And then same thing that we see before. We initialize our robot. This time we have three connections. We have two devices. And let's make it work, hopefully. Somewhere in here I have the, oh, wait, yeah, that looks like it. All right, let's make sure my drone is still on. Yeah, it's still on. Button is pushed. I have to run this under sudo because uh, being able to communicate with the BLE interface requires being in user space, or in uh, kernel space. Uh, let's see here. This is what I was mentioning with the, ah, okay, good. All right, so now if all goes well, you notice how it's now flashing? Because remember we sent a message that when it's in flight, so I'm gonna prove that that works by coming for a landing. All right, so now we go off and so where is the, uh, where, where is the station that's bad? We need a little more altitude to get all the way back there, huh? So we go over to where the problem is, and then we, we simulate the repair by doing a flip. <laughs> and then we got way too close. And you guys didn't, you know, you guys in the back, you really got gypped. You got ripped off because um, you didn't even get to see the, the cool parts. Whoa. Uh, maybe lower, lower, lower. All right, that's enough of this. Back to headquarters for a beer. So we come back to headquarters. We've been drinking at lunch. Voila! All right, so was that fun? Yeah. It's also um, a really exciting era. We invite you to join the robot evolution, just because revolutions have really bad downsides, but evolution is constant. Um, this is all free open source, Apache 2.0, so you can use it to build your little empire or big empire or just do fun stuff on your own. You know, we're not prejudiced. We're not going to judge you from the size of your project. Gobot.io is where we have all of our source available. We have a really good documentation site. All of the platforms and stuff and packages that you've seen. Um, some of these are part of the upcoming Gobot 1.2 release, which is going to be out in two weeks, concurrent with the release of GoLand 1.8. Um, you can follow us on Twitter at Gobot.io. And uh, I thank you. Questions? Anybody? We still have time for some questions. Well, we have time for questions as long as I kind of ignore you while I move everything out of the way for the next speaker. <laughs> we have uh, 10 minutes before I'm officially supposed to stop and then yeah. five minutes before they're supposed to start. So, uh, so anyway, yes, please. Yes. How many uh, actuators and sensors do you actually support? Like a lot or do you, make them, make, do you need, to, uh, need to make them custom? Um, so the, the question was, uh, how many different kinds of sensors do you support? And then the second half was, and can you make custom sensor implementations? So the first one is, right now I think we have about, uh, we have 25 platforms 
I think we have 20 or so different GPIO devices and I think 14 or 15 I2C devices. Um, we've had a lot of contributions lately uh, from people who are working on drones and other devices. I can tell because they have accelerometers and barometers. You know, barometers are used for altitude calculations usually when flying, um, unless you're really close to the ground. It's very easy to add new ones, which is why we've been getting all of these. Um, so uh, your pull request would be greatly appreciated. More? Oh, wait, important thing I almost forgot. I have a bunch of GoBot stickers. <laughs> the important parts. So uh, feel free to mob the stage. It makes me feel nice. <laughs> uh, but otherwise, just spot, I'll be around. I'm not going anywhere fast. Um, any other questions? No. Thank you very much. Thanks.
Does this work? Yeah. Hello? Okay, please uh, be seated. Uh, our next uh, talk is uh, uh, about uh, GoGit, which is a Git implementation made in uh, Go by uh, Santiago uh, 